head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like floor plan. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be architects creating our own floor plans. We're going to be creating living rooms, looking into kitchens, and pools, and sheds, and trees, and decks, and all sorts of cool things. Today we're taking a look at Floor Plan by Deepwater Games. This is a rolling right game for up to 99 players simultaneously. Let me show you what's played, I'll see you on the other side. In floor plan, up to 99 people can play simultaneously. Well, you'll be drawing your own floor plan, like a living room or a kitchen or a dining room or a washroom or a bedroom, sometimes pools, trees, fences, sheds, you name it. Now, what you're trying to do is get the most points, and you'll be getting points throughout the game for building your floor plan in correspondence with different demands. There's going to be one build, one design, and one layout. There's five of each of these. You mix up each game, so every game's different. I'll show you more of those later, but each of these have some different things things that you need to follow in order to get points. For example, a shed. You have a closet that's completely enclosed by a deck. You can see I actually did this twice in this game where I have a closet that's completely enclosed by a deck. And each time I did that, I was able to score these five points on these little sticky notes here. Or maybe I did twin fountains, which is two adjacent pools with two or more water squares each. And I did that right here. So that also got me five points. Maybe we did an open kitchen or a kitchen with four or more windows looking into a living room and I was able to do that as well and able to get those six points. So that's how you're going to be scoring points all from these different demands each game. So how do we go about doing this? Each round one player is going to roll a dice, doesn't matter who does it, and every player up to 99 players are going to share these dice. At the beginning of the game you're going to have a six and this second die is going to get rolled and you're going to draw a room that is six squares by three squares in this case. And you can do it anywhere, but you have to make sure the first one is covering the shaded area. And then you will make it a type of room um, that is on one of these two dice. Like a six here is a living room and a three is a bedroom. So I could have made this an L for living room or B for bedroom. And you would place that label anywhere within this grid. Then players are going to roll dice and everyone is going to use that dice. So let's say a player rolled it and everyone has four and two. So you have two choices. Everyone can use these two dice to either draw a room and label it like we just did in the first one or draw two sets of features, which we'll go over later. So let's say players wanted to use this to draw a room. You have a four and a two. This means it's going to be four grid squares by two and you can do it in any angle. You, you can't like overlap things and enclose rooms and things like that. But a four and a two, so it's either going to be a kitchen because that's four or a W, a washroom, which is two. So in this case, I decided to make a kitchen that is four by two, and I decided to attach it to the living room because this here, one of our things here is open kitchen. We need a kitchen with four or more windows looking into a living room. So if we're going to get six points later, we're going to set this up now for some longer term planning. So I've got a kitchen next to a living room and we've got four at least. So we're going to try to get windows here later, which are some of the features we'll talk about shortly. So let's say next a six and three is rolled. Well, instead of drawing a room, maybe we want to draw a set of features. And you'll see here, we have a six and a three. This means that we would need to draw six stones and three windows, because that's what's next to the three. And it shows you what they look like and how you draw them, for example. So three windows and six stones, we can pretty much draw them anywhere. Now we've already talked about having the open kitchen. We need one more window here later in order to get these six points. But we also have this here, the twin fountains with the stones. If we can make this, which is essentially, you know, two or more water squares surrounded by two adjacent pools, uh, we'll be able to get five points as well. So with the stones, I decided to put those six. And by the way, the amount of features that you draw for each feature is always equal to the die value. So six stones because we rolled a six, three windows because we rolled a three. But I started drawing them here because I'm trying to pretty much set myself up to make this later on. But let's say we rolled a three and a one next and we want to do some more features. Let's say we finish off these windows and then one we're going to draw a tree. So we drew our four windows. We get the window here and then we did two others here. Now we have completed this because we have four windows of a kitchen looking into a living room. So we'd be able to mark six points. Now you can mark in any of these empty sticky notes here. I just put it here. Now what this does, this is unlocks a specific bonus underneath it. This bonus allows you to, in a future turn or in this turn, use a different number on a die. So like, let's say I had that one, I ended up drawing a tree with it, but if I didn't want to, I could have, uh, you know, colored this in activating this bonus, making this die anything, and using this to draw that feature. Everyone also starts with a free bonus of changing a die as well. 
Now I drew the tree down here for a reason because we need a shaded porch, which is a tree with a deck around three sides of it. So I'm getting that set up later to try to score seven points then. Now these other bonuses allow you to do different things, like this is drawing sets of features. These two allow you to double it. So for example, if I have a three, I could double this. I would still draw windows, which is a three, but I would draw twice this, six windows if I wanted to. You could double these. This allows you to basically double the room. So if I did a three and a one, I could make uh, two rooms. I could make either a bedroom or a closet because it's three or one, and then I can make a second one, either one. Make them both the same, make them both different, doesn't matter. This allows us to draw two doors, which are in some of the features you might need or some of the demands. And then there's always a special thing at the end. Now the game will end as soon as anybody fills up all of these, or when one person can no longer use either two dice by making a uh, you know, a room or some features, and then you go to final scoring. Now in final scoring, you're simply going to add up all of these numbers <coughs> Also, each game, one of the demands will give it a bonus. Like this says one point for each room that is connected to the outside by a door or connected by a series of rooms to the outside through doors. And so you'd get a point for each of those. Plus, you need to add all that up. If you're the first one to finish all these, you also get a three point bonus and you add them up, whereas the most is the winner. Okay, now let's show you some of the other types of demands. I told you there's three types. There's layouts, there's five of each. Here's the other four. So you can pause it here and look at all the different types of things. Uh, and, and you know, we talked about doors earlier. Like this one says with windows or doors into five or more other rooms. So that's one reason why you'd want those doors that we talked about the bonus earlier. But as you can see, lots of different ways to score depending on the game that you set up randomly. And here's the other four design type ones. Look at this, a huge family pool or a hot tub a large porch, a serene escape. They're all thematic and they all make a lot of sense. And finally, the last four ones, these are the different builds, like a walk-in closet, a courtyard, kids' rooms, built-in shelving with all different furnishings. Those are a feature type we didn't you know, focus on, but all different ways to score. Well, there's Floor Plan, and of course, Deepwater Games, I believe the first game they published was Welcome To, which is one of my favorite sort of roll and write slash flip and write games. Uh, and then they've also come out with one that's a Las Vegas version of that, which is a little bit heavier. And now we have Floor Plan that is a little bit lighter than that. So let's dive in here. Floor Plan, the things I like about it is it really does feel like you're designing a house on graph paper. You know, when I was a kid, you would draw stuff, uh, you know, I did a lot of math and stuff on it as being an engineer, and I would often use graph paper as a kid or in school, and I always used to like sort of draw things on there and, and, and map things out to scale and things like that. And it really feels like you're designing a house. Like you feel like you're an architect. I'm gonna put the bedroom here, I'm gonna put the living room here. I'm gonna leave room for this pool that's gonna get added on later and the tree over here. And it really does feel like you're an architect. I think that's pretty cool. It has thematic scoring goals. Like, hey, you're gonna make a closet surrounded by a deck outside and it's a shed. Or you're gonna put rocks around there and it becomes a pool with water. Uh, or you wanna have an open kitchen layout and have the kitchen looking through the windows you know, to the, to the living room. So I like how the different goals that you're going for uh, are thematic and they make sense. There's definitely tough choices in this game on are you building rooms or are you building features? What are you gonna do with those dice? Ooh, over here I could use this room that I really need, but I don't really care about that other room. Over here is two features that I really need, but they're not gonna make me score right now, but this other one will, what will I do? So it, it's, it's, it's interesting different choices between those two, and it, it gives good tension to the game. Uh, I like that there's sort of longer term planning, not only like, hey, I'm gonna leave spaces for things over here, or I'm gonna put this room over here, or I've gotta leave enough room on the edge around this because I wanna put a deck around this, or I wanna put, you know, I'm gonna leave that open for the rocks in the pool over there in that corner. But you have gotta leave rooms for other things for future planning, and even if you're like, you know what, I don't have a living room or a kitchen yet, but this goal here wants the open kitchen, so I'm gonna need to add those at some point, so I'm gonna wanna leave room for those things there. So longer term planning is there. Even more importantly is, where do you put things you don't want? Because in this game, you're choosing the dice and you're choosing rooms or you're choosing features and you're like, oh, I really need these rocks right now, but I really don't care about this furniture or this deck because you know, just whatever, I'm not gonna build this. But you've gotta put them somewhere, right? So you've gotta start putting them in places that you're kind of like just throwaway places, right? And that you're like, oh, well, I'm gonna build over here, could've put this. Uh, I've got to leave this area open. So it's not only what you're putting where, what you're leaving open, but what are you being forced to close and where do you, where are you going to close those areas that you can't use? And those are some tough decisions that happen in the game. Uh, I like that there's a different mix of goals each game, five of each of those. There's a lot of different combinations, so each game sort of plays differently. And I love these style of games where you can play an unlimited amount of players. As long as everyone has a sheet, you can have a room full of 100 or 200 or a million people and they can all play. 
Uh, I like that, especially because, you know, I've been streaming games lately on my channel. If you haven't seen those, go check those out. Uh, but I tend to try to do games where everyone in the audience can play against me, both live and after the fact. And this is one of those games, so I probably will be streaming this in the future for you to play with me. Um, I like that you're picking which bonuses to unlock. Do I want to unlock the one that gives me the ability to change the die, or double a feature, or double a room, or get doors? And you're deciding which one to, to, to be able to unlock, and I like that aspect. It gives you a lot of flexibility in the choices. I like that the game's going to be, I think it's easily expandable with new goals, right? Um, and so I hope that they're going to bring more out. There's plenty in the base game, but I'd love to see more come out. On the negative side of thing, the bonus icons. They don't really have consistent sort of meanings. Um, the one that doubles the features and doubles the rooms sort of work different, but the logo looks the same. There's no sort of text on the on the player aid or your sheet anywhere that, that what that is. You kind of have to read that rule till you really get it, because it's like, okay, well, on the, the feature, you double the number, but you keep the feature what the original number was, which isn't necessarily that intuitive. Uh, and it's easy to get lost. But the room is like, well, you just do it twice and you can pick either one or both. And so they work sort of differently, but they have the same logo. So it's a little confusing there. The game should come with pencils, with erasers, because you will be erasing a lot in this game. Um, and I realize that the game MSRP is $20. That's at the top end of a uh, impulse buy. So I get that they need it to be at $20 for this game. And putting pencils in probably would have not made that happen for them. So I understand why they didn't do it, but it would have been nice to have pencils with little erasers because you'll need them. Uh, and the last negative thing is there's some little rules that make this, I'd say, just out of reach of like a gateway game. Like, welcome to, yes, it's pretty easy to teach, but there's a decent amount going on if you're playing with people that have not played anything about Uno, right? This is almost at that level, but these little things like, you know, okay, hey, you put a little label, but you can't put anything else there. Uh, can't even put a window there, nothing else. So you got to think of where to put the labels. The furnishings is probably the hardest thing to teach, or it's like, oh, you got furnishings, and but if you can flip it in any other way, it's not a unique furnishing. And then also the bonus meaning. So there's just like a few little fiddly things that make this not quite gateway. I would have liked to have seen them sort of streamline this a little bit more. I don't think it would have taken away from the game, but it would have made it to the point where I could literally bring this to anybody like grandma and have her play it. But it's a little bit more than that, I'd say. But overall, I really enjoy it. If you like flipping rights, rolling rights, things like that, this is lighter than Welcome To, but not quite light as, say, like Ripple Rush, which I recently streamed, but I enjoyed it quite a bit, and that's floor plan. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear. It's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high-quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.